Good morning, Church of the Living God. Hello. Ooh, Lord willing, we got we got we got something big for us today to look through. Abraham's seed. Abraham's seed. What is Abraham's seed? What does it mean to be Abraham's seed? What is what is Abraham's seed? Okay. Um, this video, which this video will most likely be a two-part video, um, this video came about by a simple question. What is Abraham's seed? And as the Lord and I were going through the scriptures, the Lord showing me thing after thing after thing, it became obvious and evident that in order to do this appropriately, it required a expository video with our base text off of Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. To be Abraham's seed has two parts. One of the physical, actual seed of Abraham, meaning that line of the Hebrews, okay? With that the line of Hebrews is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Or to be counted as his seed through faith. What does that mean? Lord willing, we are going to look uh, into the scriptures and find the answer to this question. Um, this is not milk. This is meat. So if you wish to go through the scriptures together, let's do this. So please get your authorized version of the scriptures. King James Version, the King James Scriptures, and turn in your authorized version of the Scriptures to Galatians chapter 3. As you see, I am going to be utilizing two sets of Scriptures in this video. It's, it's easier for me. We are going to be going through Galatians chapter 3 in its entirety, virtually verse by verse. And hopefully we will come away with an answer onto this question. So... Let us, let us dig right in, shall we? Galatians chapter 1. Uh, Galatians chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? Foolish. To be foolish is to behave and live as if there is no God. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? Romans. Romans chapter 1. Romans. Oh, excuse me. Romans chapter 1. Oh, beg your pardon, brethren. <laughs> Romans chapter 16, verses 17 and 18. Now I beseech you, brethren, <clears throat> mark them which cause divisions and offenses, contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? Verse 18 in Romans chapter 16. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. See, Paul came on to the Galatians preaching the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Not only did he preach that in word, but in power, because it is not just in word, it is in demonstration of power, meaning by how he walked his talk. See, that's what that means when he says, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you, Okay? Remember, 
in, in Galatians. Paul talks about, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth within me. And that we are crucified unto this world. Okay? So, Christ being set forth, crucified among you. Right here where it says, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. By preaching the word and also by walking his talk. There are so many out there who can speak a good game. But when it comes to actually adhering to what they speak, the two don't match up. Go to Titus. Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1. Verses 10 on to verse 16. For there are many unruler, unruly and vain talkers and deceivers. Oh yeah, especially nowadays. Especially they of the circumcision. Of the circumcision, those who were under the law. Those who were trying to keep the law, saying that today in this dispensation, you have to keep the law in order to be saved, to stay saved, and to be right with God, that kind of thing. <clears throat> whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, The Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. The Cretans are always liars. Hmm. Signaling out a trait of a specific kindred? Oh boy. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, The Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true. Wherefore rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith. Not giving heed to... Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth hmm. unto the pure. All things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God. But in works, they deny him. Being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work, reprobate. See, and when Paul talks about, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? A Judaizer, someone who wanted to uh, bring people under the law, Okay that ye should not obey the truth. They had a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. A form of godliness. What is godliness? Being separate. Other than that. Okay? That's what that means. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you, that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? Again, Paul preached to them the gospel, preached to them the truth. But unlike what he tell, talks about in Titus, they profess that they know God. Who? Who? Verse 10, for there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. And circumcision was handed on to those under the law. Those in scripture who were under the law were primarily given on to who? The Jews, the Hebrews. Yes, yes. Remember, those of other kindreds could become Jews to be under the law, but not all were Hebrews. Okay, there's a difference. Talked about that in a video, uh, what is a Jew? I'll link it in the description box of this video for you, okay? But unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. 
Verse 16, they profess that they know God. They can talk a good game. They can bewitch people. But in works, they deny him. Being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work, reprobate. Hmm. Verse 2, this only would I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Uh, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. We're going to use what the easy believism heretic Jesuit coadjutor devil takes out of context without reading in Romans chapter 3, verses 10 on to verse 18 first, okay? We'll get to that later. But here is the antidote for the problem. This only would I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Romans chapter 3, verses 20 on to verse 28. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, shall there no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested because Christ came to fulfill, to pay the penalty for sin, to be the perfect, unblemished sacrifice for sin. He never sinned. Jesus Christ never sinned, okay? Being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ uh, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Then how, and how do you arrive at this belief? Uh, you have to deal with Romans chapter 1 and chapter 2 and uh, up to verse uh, 18 at least where it condemns you, condemns you that you are lost on your way to hell unless you are broken of your self-righteousness and have godly sorrow and come to our Lord Jesus Christ in fear of him and call upon his name that he may save you. Okay. Even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. For all have sinned, amen, and come short of the glory of God. You know, that includes you too, right? You can't hide under the umbrella. You have to take personal accountability and responsibility before the Lord that it's your fault and not blame others. Being justified Freely by his grace. By grace are ye saved. Through faith. Being justified freely by his grace. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Okay? By his grace. Unmerited favor. Given unto you. Grace, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, the perfect, sinless substitute for your wretched hide, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, because his blood cleanseth us from all sin, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at this time, His righteousness. See, under the law, you did this, 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 and this, and that made you righteous because of what you did. Okay? Unlike today. Okay? Christ paid the penalty for your sin. He died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He shed His blood on the cross to pay for your sins. He was the perfect sacrifice for sins. Not a blemish in him without sin. 
Okay? He died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? And it is by his grace through our faith that he saves us. And when we come to him on his terms, his righteousness is imputed unto us. See? Nothing that we have anything to do with. Okay? Verse 25 again. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past, through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? See, if you're boasting in, I just believe, you're boasting in something that you are doing in your belief. Whereas under the law, you're boasting, I did this, I, I was confirmed, I had communion, I did this, 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 <laughs> okay? <laughs> And I just believe that's something you are doing. See, remember, faith is our response to God's grace. Okay? It is God's grace that saves us. Okay? And our response unto his grace is faith. See? Okay? So where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay. But by the law of faith. Verse 28. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. This only would I learn of you. Received you ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Now, verse 3. Are ye so foolish, living as if there is no God, have ye begun, having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? You know, the skin suit? Huh? You begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by what you do? The flesh? The skin suit? Huh? Yeah? Uh, Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. I could just do it in the other one, but no. No, that one is point of reference. Galatians chapter 2, verses 16 on to verse 21. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. What, were, what are those works? The works here contained in the Old Testament. The Levitical law, that kind of stuff like that, okay? The Ten Commandments. You couldn't keep those even if you tried. Even if you had a gun pointed at your head, you couldn't keep the Ten Commandments perfectly. Only God manifests in the flesh, you devil. Only he could do what we could never do. Okay? So, let's continue. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. What does that mean? This basically means you got to know that your place. You need to know that you are nothing. At your best state, you are altogether vanity. You are not good. You were not worth Christ dying for on the cross. Okay? You were not worth it. There is nothing in you, nothing in me, that was worth him dying for. God so loved past tense, that he gave past tense, okay? So, but if, but if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Yes, because Jesus Christ never sinned. He is perfect, 
without sin. Okay? He never sinned. The only temptation he endured was because of the sinful flesh. See, you devils are making, like you all do, you Catholic coadjutors, you make flesh God. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Get that through your head. And go ahead and stick your fingers down your throat and vomit up the Pucharist, okay? Come on. But if... But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Kind of like when a dog returns to his vomit. Okay? Christ has redeemed us from the law. Okay? So once he has redeemed us from the law... We couldn't keep the law perfectly. Neither could the Hebrews, the Jews, unto whom the law was given. And they even confessed that in Acts chapter 15. It's like, why should we put upon them something that we nor our fathers could never do? Okay? So, once the Lord has redeemed you from the curse of the law, because you can't... Not that we're not under law today. Okay? You read Romans chapter 13. There are commandments for today. Okay? So, but... He has redeemed us from that. Why do you want to go back under that? To try to justify your flesh, see? Why? Because someone who keeps the law and does this, this, and this, boy, you sure got something to boast about, don't you? You sure do, right? Yeah. Yeah, let's continue. For I, through the law, am dead to the law. How is that possible? Because you realize soon, very quickly, that you could never do that. You could never keep the law perfectly. Only God manifests in the flesh, you devil. Only God could do so. Okay? Being in, being in the limitation of being in the flesh. Only God could do it. For I, through the law, am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Christ liveth in you. You know the Holy Ghost? The Lord is that Spirit? Jesus Christ, who is our Father? Okay? And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, what you do yourself, then Christ is dead in vain. Verse 4. Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 9 on to verse 20. Verse 4 again in Galatians chapter 3. Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? What? Well, you started out in the Spirit. Now some somebody coming around bewitching you is like, oh, you got to keep the law. You're not truly saved unless you go under the law of Moses. You're not truly saved unless you keep the commandments of men. Like what the Catholics teach. Okay? Have you, are you, you know, you've started in the spirit, now you're going to be made perfect by the flesh? Hmm. So, you've suffered being in the spirit, but now that you're doing the commandments of men to justify yourself? Have you suffered in vain? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 9 on to verse 20. For I am the least of the apostles, that am not me to be called an apostle. Why? Because I persecuted the Christians. Oh, excuse me. Because I per persecuted the church of God. That's not a building. That's the people. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. 
and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly, abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believed. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no if there be no resurrection, but if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. What, why are we going through this? Think about it. If someone comes along telling you, you got to keep the law of Moses in order to be saved, stay saved, you know, okay, yeah, the sacrifice was paid, sure, but you got to keep the law of Moses. You got to keep the commandments and men in order to be right with God. So what are they saying? What is the root of what they are saying? that Christ's death, burial, and resurrection wasn't enough, that the blood of God wasn't enough. That's what they're basically saying. That is what is the root of their argument that branches out into different flavors. Okay? That's the root of their argument. So, hence, if Christ isn't resurrected, if it is not finished, and if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. And when you got someone coming along trying to get you under the law, what is the root of what they're getting at? To glorify themselves, to glorify another's flesh, to get you away from the grace of God, and to puff you up thinking that you can be right in the sight of God because of what you do in the flesh. That's what the root of it is. See, you gotta get, you gotta shave off, off of that ham hock, these arguments that these devils come up with. Okay? You gotta go for the head of the snake, not mingle with the tail end, because continual droppings come from the tail end. No, you gotta go right to the head, Jack. Okay? Let's continue. Yay. At verse 15. Yay. And we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that God that He raised up Christ. Sure did. Whom He raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. And see, that's the whole point of the argument. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, we sure. Death, burial, and resurrection, right. But in order to stay saved, to be right with God, now you have to come under the law. No, 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 no. See, they are, they're, they are telling you that it's not finished. Just like the Catholics who have to continually go to Mass, who have to continually ingest that disgusting cookie and drink the wine by what they do, see. Verse 18. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all we are of all men most miserable. But here's the beautiful part. But now is Christ risen from the dead and became the first fruits of them that slept. Christ is risen from the dead. Uh, hey Catholic, he's not still on the cross. Hey Catholic, he's not in that little tinfoil box of yours, okay? You Catholics worship flesh. You devils worship flesh because that's what your father, the devil, worships, okay? 
Now, let's read verse 5 in Galatians chapter 3. He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit, note that capital S, and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses... What verse are we on? 1 Corinthians chapter... Uh, okay, I beg your pardon, brethren. I beg your pardon. It's a 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 under verse 5. Couldn't read my own handwriting. Sorry. 1 <laughs> Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 under verse 5. Uh, let's read verse 5 again. He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 5. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Excellency of speech. I've listened to people when they preach, apparently, that you need to get a dictionary out with every other thing he says to look up what he says. Words have meaning. Words are good. By words, we communicate the faith. Absolutely. But you know, when you got to have a dictionary just to follow someone, ugh, ugh. what are they trying to exude to you? That they got a head knowledge by using fancy schmancy speech. Let's continue. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Yeah, you don't need to break out the dictionary with everything you say when you're talking about the testimony of God. Okay? You need the scriptures. But before that, you need the Holy Ghost, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, who lives within you. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And we already uh, mentioned about Galatians chapter 2, about Christ, uh, you're crucified with Christ, yet nevertheless I live, yet Christ liveth within me. In verse 2, he's talking about knowing those who are of the church of the living God, who are actually truly saved, born again, converted, new creatures in Christ Jesus. That's what he's talking about in verse 2, okay? Those who have God within them, okay? Not the little G God of this world, but Jesus Christ, God our Father, okay? And I was with you in weakness, and in fear, and in much trembling, trembling. and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the Spirit and of power. You, a lot out there can talk a good game. They can make it sound as if they're saved by using big, Sounding words like exegesis and stuff like that. And just using all these uh, words that when you listen to him, it's like, what does that mean? He's speaking English, but he, we ain't speaking the same language. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. How is that so? Because you have Christ living within you. And today, in this dispensation, prophesying is the Spirit of God within the individual speaking to you through the scriptures and comparing spiritual things with spiritual, okay? Prophesying today. And demonstration of power, being a new creature in Christ Jesus, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh, okay? By demonstration of power power of being a new creature walking your talk that your faith verse 5 should not stand in the wisdom of men just believe you're saved just by what you do by your thought by your belief but in the power the power of God 
power of God that can transform you and make you a new creature. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, two verses. Verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 19 and 20. But I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and will know, not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. For the kingdom of God, spiritual, this is a reference unto spiritual, kingdom of God. For the kingdom of God, spiritual, see, okay, the spirit living within you, okay? Spirit of God is talking about the spiritual kingdom. Christ within you. And when you have Christ within you, he will give you not only wisdom, which is the fear of the Lord, but knowledge because of Christ living within you, see. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. That, like we've already looked at. So many out there can talk a great game. They can sound as if they're saved, sound as if they're educated because they use all this hyperbole. They use all the sophistry. There's a couple of big words for you, okay? But all that proves is that they're well-learned and don't have the spirit within them. That's all that proves. Why? For the kingdom of God, kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Walking your talk, living as a demonstration of God's grace of being a new creature daily. Do we live up to that daily? <laughs> of course not. And if you say you do it perfectly every day, liar, liar, pants on fire. Okay? Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1. On to verse 4. This is the third time I am coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. I told you before and foretell you, as if I were present the second time. And being absent now, I write to them which heretofore have sinned, and to all other, that if I come again, I will not spare. Since ye seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, which to you word is not weak, is not weak, but is mighty in you. For though he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. Weakness. The spirit is truly uh, willing, but the flesh profiteth nothing. The spirit is willing. The flesh is weak. Hello. The flesh is weak? You skin suit worshiping Catholics? Okay? For though he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. And, and let's read, let's read verse 5. Examine yourself. Whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you? Except ye be reprobates. Verse 6 in Galatians chapter 3. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15. Now 32. See, a lot of people like to tell you that the time of the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which was before the law, which was immediately after the dispensation of the Garden of Eden, okay? But the first dispensation in Scripture was works, only works. But a lot of people like to say that the dispensation of the patriarchs was identical to the dispensation that we are in today. Similar, but what was the big, big difference? Christ had not died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, had he? 
He had not shed his blood upon the cross. They were not looking forward to the cross in the Old Testament. It was prophesied in Genesis, yes, the way of the cross from the beginning, yes, but it wasn't revealed until the New Testament, and that's what Ephesians 3 talks about. Read that if you have any questions about that, okay? But Genesis chapter 15, Genesis chapter 15, verses 1 on to verse 6. See, this dispensation today, it is finished. And when you got someone coming and say, no, well, okay, yeah, that sacrifice was paid, but you, you got you to gotta be under the law. You got to be kosher. You got to do this, that, and the other thing. So you're saying that Christ's death, burial, and resurrection and the blood that he shed wasn't enough. In this dispensation, it is finished. We have faith on what God has done, the cross, as pertaining to salvation. But during the time of the patriarchs, Genesis chapter 15, verses 1 under verse 16. Uh, one, uh, on 1 under verse 6, beg your pardon. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram, in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield, and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus? And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed. A promised seed. And lo, one born in my house, in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And in typology, in type, Isaac, the son of promise, when Abraham and Sarai, Sarah were well past their age to conceive, seemed like all hope was lost. Kind of like Israel. Israel today, it seems like all hope for them to come in uh, onto salvation and belief on their Messiah, you know, Yeshua HaMashiach, okay? It seems impossible. But God made a promise. God promised Abram here of a promised seed. You see the type? And Abram, the line of the Hebrew, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Unto Abram, remember, is first attributed the word Hebrew. Hence, of Shem, of the line of Abraham, Abraham, Isaac, who was the child, who was the son of promise. See, Ishmael, to you Muslims, Yes, Ishmael was the firstborn. But see, the birth of Ishmael came of Abraham and Sarah doing themselves, trying to fulfill the promises of God. They took it upon themselves in their flesh to bring about God's promises. And look what happened. Yes, you Muslims. Yes, Ishmael, your descendant, was the firstborn of Abraham. But it is in Isaac, his seed will be called. Again, cover that in that video about what is a Jew. I'll link it in the description box. But let's continue. Verse 4 again. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And Jesus sprang from Judah of the line of the Hebrew, the Jews. Okay? And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And Abraham and he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. Question. Was anything at this moment fulfilled unto Abram who would become Abraham? No. The promised seed of Isaac came. Yes. But was the land given unto him while he lived? No. 
So what was he doing? What was his faith accounted for righteousness in what God will do? See, in what God will do. Uh, Genesis chapter 22 now. Genesis chapter 22. That's the difference between the dispensation saints. Okay, that's the difference. The, the dispensation of the patriarchs is not identical to today's dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. Why? Because Abraham, during this, uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, during this dispensation, the time of the patriarchs, they were looking forward to what God will do. While today, it is finished as pertaining to salvation. Okay? But, Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 under verse 8. Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 under verse 8. Now, this is the, uh, the promised son has been given. Ishmael ca cast out because Ishmael was brought about by what Abraham and Sarah did of them own selves by their own workings, the flesh. Okay? Not so. And those of you of Ishmael, today in this dispensation, you can be saved. Come to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, call upon his name. And may he save you. Okay? In harping on the fact that, yes, you are descended from the firstborn, it is in Isaac his seed is called. That's something you have to deal with, dear friend. So, now, this is the giving of the seed. The seed had been given, Isaac. Look what the Lord tells uh, Abraham to do. The typology here is just rife. Okay? So, let's read. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. There was a video done where we talk about this. If I remember, I'll put it in the description box. Okay? And said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son. Thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for a burnt offering, and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, his young men, okay, check this out. Note this. Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Note this verse. We'll touch on it in just a bit, okay? And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire in the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Provide himself a lamb. Will provide himself, excuse me. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Provide himself a lamb. What does that mean? Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifest in the flesh. Catholic, flesh is not God. God was manifest in the flesh. Get that through your deluded head, please. Save yourself some trouble. But now, okay, let's read verses 15 and 19. 
Uh, note in verse 6 where he said to his servants, Hey, stay here. Me and the lad, we're going to go up and do our thing. Verses 15 now on to verse 19 in Genesis chapter two, uh, 22. Pick your part. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abram out of heaven, Abraham out of heaven, the second time, and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son. See, again, during this dispensation of the patriarchs, it was faith in what God will do. The dispensation of the law, faith was there too, in what God will do, but you had to keep the law. In this dispensation uh, of the patriarchs, the difference between the two, between ours and this one, is having faith in what God will do, while today it is finished. We have faith in what Jesus Christ has done for us. Okay? That's the difference. That in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed, reference unto Jesus Christ, shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Verse 19. So, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. All the nations of the earth be blessed. How? Fulfillment in Jesus Christ. Okay? That's what that's talking about. Now, remember in verse 6 we looked at how he's like, okay, you guys stay here, we're going to do this thing. Note what is noted in verse 19. So Abraham returned unto his young men, and they rose up and went together, together, hmm, to Beersheba. And Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. Why did he say together? Whereas before he's like, you stay here. Because in this dispensation, Jew or Greek, Hebrew or non-Hebrew, Gentile, okay? Anyone can be saved today when you come to the Lord on his terms, see? So whereas before they were separate, you stay here, we're going this way. But afterwards, after the offering of the perfect offering, a lamb without blemish, sinless, who shed his blood on the cross, after that, they go together. Ain't that interesting, huh? But now go to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Let's, let's re refresh our memories about verse 6. Even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Abraham. Abraham. He didn't see the promise, but he believed him, and it was accounted to him to, for righteousness. But look at verse 6 in Hebrews 11. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, he is, he is, God is. See, Bibles, a lot of them say Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Has, could mean past tense or present. See, there's question there. But Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God today must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. God is. And he is what? And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Okay? Now, Let's skip down to verse 7 on to verse 19 now, okay? 
By Noah, in Hebrews chapter 11. By faith, Noah. Well, what about Noah? What about Noah? Okay? By faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet. Hey, go build an ark because I'm going to pour out the rain. Moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as, a strange, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed, and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. And what was his promise? His promise for us today of the church of the living God, we're going to be redeemed, caught up, resurrected. Okay? But when it comes to salvation, it is finished. It is finished. We have faith on what Christ did for us. Undeserving, wretched sinners. Our faith is on Jesus. Not in our belief. Not in our flesh, not in our works, but on Jesus. For what he did, it is finished. Okay? Verse 11, uh, where did we end off? Verse 12. Therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. And see, in the Old Testament, before the way to heaven was made open, made plain because the perfect uh, sacrifice had yet to be made, they went down into the heart of the earth, into Abraham's bosom. Okay? Our Lord talks about that, about Abraham's bosom, uh, in the tale of Lazarus. I believe that's Luke 13. Don't quote me on that. Okay? But they went down to Abraham's bosom. Remember Samuel the prophet? They called him up, not called him down. What? What? Did Samuel go to hell? No, he was in Abraham's bosom. Okay? For they that say such things desire declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, an heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath pre prepared for them a city. And so you've got to remember, the book of Hebrews is specifically written for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. That is why the book of Hebrews is structured in the way it is. Okay, That's why they are running down the faith again. Because during the time of Jacob's trouble, okay, once we, the church of the living God, the body of Christ, get redeemed, this dispensation is over. Okay, The dispensation of the time of Jacob's trouble, which is going to be by faith and works. Is going to be upon this world. Seven years of torment. Seven years of destruction. That man of sin. The son of perdition will be revealed. Cause everybody to get a mark in their right hand. Or in their forehead. Without that you can't buy or sell. Okay. So during that time. The time of Jacob's trouble. It's faith and works. You take the mark of the beast. You're going right to hell. No matter these Jesuit coadjutor Catholics who are trying to tell you it's just believe in every dispensation. That's nonsense. See, their goal is, dear friend, is for you to be in the time of Jacob's trouble, to take that mark of the beast 
in. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you know, the steel of the Jesuit poniard. Steel of the Jesuit poniard is not the uh, mark of the beast. But yeah, to take the mark of the beast in your right hand or in your forehead. I did that because isn't it interesting today that they're preparing you people that you have to do something in order to buy and sell. You have to take the steel of the Jesuit poniard in order to be free to buy and sell. Or you have to wear a face mask. See, mentally preparing you for what is to come. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 17. Did we read verse 16? Let's read it again. But now they desire a better country, that is, an heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, which we already looked at. Of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. See, our Lord Jesus Christ, who sprang from that line of the Hebrew. Okay? Accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. Even, verse 6 in Galatians chapter 3, even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. See, like I said, believing in what God will do. That faith of Abraham we have today in what God has done as pertaining to salvation. Let's continue in verse 7. Know ye, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. Faith on God. In the dispensation of the patriarchs and what he will do. In this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, it is finished in what has been done. Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. Verses 16 and 17 in Romans chapter 1. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile. And scripturally, a Jew is attributed unto being a Hebrew. Okay? For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith, faith in what he will do, to faith in what God has done. Okay? Faith is... And what will be done, faith in what has been done. See, from faith to faith. Okay? As it is written, the just shall live by faith. See, we're putting our faith upon God, as did Abraham. That is the similarity. That is what Paul is talking about. Okay? But you got to remember... Again, the differences. One, and what he will do. Today, two, and what has been done. Okay? But we having that faith of Abraham is faith upon God. Not upon our belief. Not upon our works. Not upon, oh, there's something good in me. No. 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 It's upon the Lord. You say you're saved because you just believe you're trusting in yourself. You say, God loves everybody. Everybody's going to be saved. You're trusting on yourself, saying that you're good. You got rid of this, 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 and this, 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 and then you came to the Lord, then he saved you. You're trusting in yourself, what you did to make yourself righteous. See, For the just shall live by faith. Our faith, dear friends, is predicated on what? Upon God. Okay? Under the law, what was the faith in? Faith was in God that if you did what he said, you would be righteous in his eyes because you did what he said. Okay? 
But your faith was that God would honor what you did in the law. Your faith was still in God, but in that he would honor you for doing what he said in the law, which you couldn't keep. Hence, today, he's removed that. Okay, not that we are without law, but no, of course not. But that the law has been fulfilled, meaning the perfect sacrifice for sins has been accomplished. Okay, hence we don't need to keep the law today. Even if you are a Hebrew, you don't need to keep the law today to be saved, stay saved, or to be right with God. Okay, so now go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4. From faith to faith. For the just shall live by faith. Right? Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Verses 1 on to verse 13. Can you handle this? <laughs> I, I told you. This, this isn't milk. Okay? Okay. Most of you devils have the attention span of a gnat anyway. Deuteronomy 4, verses 1 under verse 13. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them, that ye may live, and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. Be careful about these Bibles who take away from the scriptures God's word. Okay? Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor. For all the men that follow Baal Peor, the Lord thy God hath destroyed them from among you. But ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive every one of you this day. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom, note that, and your understanding in the sight of these nations. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Your wisdom and your understanding. By what? Keeping the law. See, you keep the law, you have some. Well, I've done this. I've done that. See, from faith to faith. Your faith was in God and keeping the law that he would honor you for you doing what you did according to the law. That he would honor you. Your faith was that God would honor you by you honoring what he told you to do. The law. Okay? And guess what? No one can keep the law perfectly. Okay, let's, let's continue though. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. Walking the talk. Talking about the law, keeping the law. Whereas today, talking about the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, walking by faith. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you, that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you, it is finished. Speaking the gospel and living of the gospel. Okay, you with me? Okay, let's continue. And say, surely this great nation is a wise and an understanding people. For what nation, the Hebrews... Jews, Israel, is there so great, which hath God so nigh unto them, as the Lord our God is in all these, in all things that we call upon him for? Or what nation is there so great, that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law, which I set before you this day? See, in the Old Testament under the law, Israel was set apart to be God's witnesses unto the nations. By what? Keeping the law that he gave them. Today in this dispensation, we have the church of the living God. We are the witnesses unto the nations. Okay? And today the church of the living God is comprised of both Jews, Hebrews, and Gentiles. 
those who are not of the line of what God has chosen, the Hebrew. Okay? Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently. Keep thy soul diligently? Yeah, because the circumcision made without hands wasn't there yet. Whatever you did in your flesh under the Old Testament affected your soul. Okay? <laughs> but today, in this dispensation, because remember, all flesh is sinful. Okay? Christ in you, that circumcision made without hands, separating your soul from your flesh. The word was made flesh. If you don't want to hear that truth, that shows us of what spirit you are truly of, dear friend. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. Not give them over to the Jesuits to teach them anything. No. Father and mother were to teach the children. Especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. And he came near and stood under the mountain, and the mountains burned with fire unto the mist of the heaven, mist of heaven, excuse me, with darkness, clouds, and thick darkness. And the Lord spake unto you out of the mist of the fire, Ye heard the voice of the words, but ye but saw no similitude. Only ye heard a voice. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even ten commandments. And he wrote them upon two tables of stone. And of course, we couldn't keep that. Nobody can keep the ten commandments. Okay? Thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Okay? Um, you say you don't sin anymore. Number one, you're calling God a liar. And number two, you're full of pride, boasting up yourself. You're coveting, in a way. Okay? Um, and, like I said, you're already lying. Yeah. There's no such thing as sinless perfection today. Why? Because sin has been condemned in the flesh. Okay? Okay? But now go to Ephesians chapter 2. We could not keep the law. No one could keep the law. And we know that. <laughs> even, even these easy believism devils know that. But see, we're in that dispensation because remember it said, keep your soul. You kept your soul be by keeping the law because that circumcision made without hands wasn't there. Unlike today, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 on to verse 10. For by grace are ye saved through faith. Not, it doesn't say because of faith. Because of faith. It says through faith. For by grace, God's unmerited favor upon you. Through faith, your response, your answer to God's grace. And that not of yourselves, just believe, I'm a good person, I got rid of X, Y, Z first. It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Works. Works being referenced to are the works of the law. Okay? We're looking at that. Okay? But there again, I believe. 
I'm saved by faith alone. My belief. I'm a good person. I've done bad things, but yeah. I, there's something good enough in me for God to die for me, right? I, I was able to get rid of, I was able to stop all this stuff. Then I came to the Lord and he judged me worthy and granted me repentance and has saved me. But I gotta, gotta continually re be repenting. And you do. The life, it's called sanctification. But guys, when guys like Paul Washer and Ray Comfort and stuff like that, and that Levi Price dude, uh, when they talk about stuff like that, it's that they got to keep continually doing this stuff or else they'll lose their salvation. Yeah, yeah. Verse 10. For we are his workmanship, made a new creature, his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, because Christ Jesus lives within you if you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, okay? Onto good works. God saves you and he calls you onto good works, not to stay saved or to be saved, okay? But to be an ambassador, to walk your talk, okay? Having the ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation, okay? For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Walk your talk. How simple is that? It actually can be quite difficult, can it? Yes, it can. Now, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We have to come here. We had to come here to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We had to, okay? Because we're seeing the difference, okay? Under the law, you had to keep the you had to keep the law and have faith that God would honor you for keeping the law, because anything you did in the flesh it would affect your soul because the circumcision made without hands wasn't there. In this dispensation, Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Shed His blood on the cross, and His blood, not His flesh, cleanseth us from all sin. Okay? So, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we, we have to cover this, verses uh, 17 on to verse 21. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God. Who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. Who is come in the flesh, you idiots. And hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Who has he given the ministry of reconciliation unto? His body, the church of the living God. Okay? The ground and pillar of truth. To wit, that God was in Christ. God was in Christ? Yes. Yes. Reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. God was in Christ? Spirit, the Holy Ghost, soul, the Father, the body, the word, genius, made, Flesh. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Very simple. You guys just are lost. You can't understand it. Let's continue. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us. He never sinned. <laughs> Who knew no sin, 
that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. See, there are those out there who are trying to now say that I said that Jesus sinned. They, they, they never watched the video. They never watched the video. We, we cover this. We cover this. Just guys looking to cause trouble. Because these lost devils, they can't answer the truth. They can't. They can't answer the truth. Can't at all. Now, verses 8 and 9 in Galatians chapter 3. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, in thee shall all nations be blessed. Some will look at that and say, the gospel, the gospel. It was uh, from faith alone, from... No. Gospel means what? Good news. That's what gospel means. Preach the good news. The gospel. That's what gospel means. Okay? So when he says, preach before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, in thee shall all nations be blessed. It's not referring to faith alone or any nonsense like that. No, no. The good news that God will do. That's what that's talking about. Nice try, you wicked devils. They'll come to verse 8 and say, See, it's faith alone <laughs> from Genesis unto Revelation. That's a lie. No. Gospel is good news. That's what that means. Preach to Abraham the good news, saying in thee shall all nations be blessed. Shall be. What will be done? The gospel. That's what that means, okay? The gospel. Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Shed his blood on the cross. That's good news. Yes. And if you come to him on his terms, he will save you. Good news. The gospel. Duh. Now, verse 9. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Genesis chapter 12. See, our faith is on God. So when Paul is talking about the faith of Abraham, the faith that he had on God. Abraham, again, what God will do. Whereas today, what God has done, okay? I'm going to pound that into your head till you get it. Because these devils, oh, these devils. Oh, these devils working for the Vatican. Oh, oh, they're slicker than snot, man. They're slicker than snot. They're slicker than snot. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 on to verse 9. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, separate, godly, being called of God, okay, and from thy father's house unto a land I will shew thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse, them, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Because Abraham believed what God would do. And that faith of believing on God, that's the faith of Abraham. But see, what are we having faith in? See, you got some Judaizer guy wants to get you under the law. You're having faith in your works, that God will honor you for your works. When today in this dispensation, people, no, not at all. Let's continue. Oh, excuse me, beg your pardon. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. And Lot went with him. And Abram was 70, 70 and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarai his wife, and Lot his brother's son, 
and all their substance that they had gotten gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran, and they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Shechem, unto the plain of Moreh. And the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord, who appeared unto him. And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west, and Hai on the east. And there he builded an altar unto the Lord, and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed going on still toward the south. And Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. The, well, Ephesians chapter 1, the um, Calvinist likes to say that the predestinated are elect and non-elect. You're going to heaven whether you want to or not. You're going to hell whether you want to or not. The Lord allowed me to do a video on Calvinism, if I can remember that. I will put it in the description. One second. One second. Sorry. I wrote that down so I won't forget it, <laughs> okay? Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 7 on to verse 14. I already have covered this in another video, one on Calvinism, that will be in the description box. You have any questions about it, you're a Calvinist, watch the video. In whom we have redemption through his blood, not his flesh, his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to the good pleasure, according to his good pleasure, which he hath proposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one, Jews and Gentiles, all things in Christ. Both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. In heaven? Yeah. In heaven too. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance. Kingdom of heaven. Inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. When the Lord saves you by grace through faith, you are predestinated to be with the Lord. Your, pre, your, your destination is set. You're going to be with the Lord. You're going to go to heaven when you die. Okay? Once saved, always saved. Okay? You're going to go to heaven when you die. That's, nothing's going to change that. Okay? Even if you try. If you come to him on his terms, broken, contrite, and fear the Lord, call upon his name. Very simple. Getting over yourself is a hard part, isn't it, Catholic? Yes. Your, your destination is set. Okay? You're going to heaven. Okay? That's what he's talking about. Let's continue. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted... After that ye heard the word of truth. The word of truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. That we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel, the good news, of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Sealed. God lives within you. And since God lives within you, 
that circumcision made without hands. That's why you can touch things that are uh, forbidden under the law. You can eat your pork. You can eat your uh, shrimp, which are both very good. Yeah, you add that with some rice and some hot sauce and some also some bell peppers. Mm, mm, very good, very good. But you can eat those things now because Christ is within you, God the Father, you know, the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit, okay? God within you, so you are sealed. The flesh profiteth nothing, people. Get that through your head, please, okay? And since God is in you, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption being caught up of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. The purchased possession, redemption of the purchased possession being caught up before the time of Jacob's trouble. Being once saved, always saved. Okay? Okay? For the scripture foreseeing that God would justify, uh, verses 8 and 9 again in Galatians chapter 3. For the, and the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel, good news, unto Abraham, saying, And these shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. See, you have, you, you just believe. What is your faith in? Is it upon God? You listen, listen to these easy believism devils. Listen to what they say. What is their, what is their faith in? Their belief. Listen to these ecumenical pond scum. Okay? That God loves everybody. Something was good in you, was worth God dying for. What are they having faith in? That they're good in some way. The Lordship Salvationists. Again. What are they having faith in? What they have done. When you actually listen. you It's hard to do. But when you listen to what they are actually trying to teach you. It don't add up. Why? Because those are of Satan. His church. You know, Roman Catholicism and her, her army, the Jesuit order. Okay? Now, let's read verses 10 on to verse 12 now in Galatians chapter 3. 10 on to verse 12. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. Why? For it is written... Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. For it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Because if there was a law that could uh, produce righteousness, then what need would there have been for God to provide himself? a lamb for a burnt offering. Because if the law did it, then, you know. And the law is not of faith. Really. But the man that doeth them shall live in them. The law is not of faith. See, again, in the Old Testament, under the law, your faith is that God would honor you for you keeping his law. That's what the faith, your faith was in God. But in order to be right with God, you had to keep the law. Okay? Your faith was in God. Yes. But it says right here, and the law is not a faith. Because it's something you do. Something that you do that gain God's favor for him to see you righteous because you did what he told you to do. Okay? It's very simple. But now, Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Not 14, Brad. Romans chapter 4. 
Romans chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 17. We're going to let the scriptures speak for themselves. What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, the works of the law, and remember, the law wasn't given in the time of Abraham, but the time of the patriarchs. Okay? So in this context, for if Abraham were justified by works, what he did, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. And for what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now, and see here, here's, here's the thing. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. I believe, therefore I'm saved. God's obligated to save me because I just believe. I gave up, I gave all this up for the cause of Christ. Therefore, you're obligated to forgive me. God have mercy upon you, you wicked devil. The scripture says I'm not good, but there is, there's something good in me. That's why you died. God loves everybody. You wicked devil. But to him that worketh not to gain favor with God, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. <laughs> okay? How, how, how simple is this to get? If you're lost, a devil, you're not going to understand it, okay? Because you're a natural man. You receive nothing of the Spirit of God, okay? You can't because you're lost. But how simple is this? This is pretty simple. You trust God that what, in the Old Testament, uh, under the law, even before the law, okay? During the uh, dispensation of the patriarchs, okay? Abraham believed God that he would do what he said he would do. So he was believing what God would do, not what, like as today we have, that he has done for us, okay? That's the difference, okay? That is the difference. So he believed God. And because he believed God, he attributed it as we have just read. But remember, from faith to faith, Faith in what God will do, you do X, Y, Z, and Z, you'll be right in my eyes. Whereas today, you can't be right in my eyes. You have to come to me on my terms, though. Ooh. Let's continue. Verse 6. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying... Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only? Circumcision. Who is circumcision given unto? Abraham. Yes. Abraham is of who? The Hebrews. And circumcision was of what? The covenant of God. And under the law, you had to be circumcised. Okay? Who is uh, referring to when they refer to, when the Lord refers to the circumcision? Who is he referring unto? Hebrews. Jews. Okay? Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only? Or upon the uncircumcision also? Today, yes. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for Righteousness. And remember, under the law, it was only Israel. And in order to be right with God under the Old Testament, you had to go to them. You had to do what God said, which pertained unto Israel. Okay? That's why you see in like Esther, many became Jews. They weren't of Israel. They weren't Hebrews. But they adapted the ways of the law in order to be right with God. So see, there could be Jews. Many can be Jews today. 
but there are not many Hebrews. And there are those out there who say they are Jews, like these wicked black Hebrew Israelites, which is an impossibility. Some of the more wicked people I've ever run into. Uh, we'll get to that in another video. Another video, but, okay? Let's continue. Come with this blessedness upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? It wasn't, he wasn't circumcised yet. Okay? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. And he received the sign of circumcision. The sign of circumcision. A seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had yet been uncircumcised that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. You, you can't say that any more plainer than that. And the father of circumcision... To them who are not of their circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. Faith on God, what he is going to do. That faith of Abraham for us today, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile. We have faith in God, what he has done. Do you get it? Do you get it? Okay? Do you get it? For the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law. Obviously, come on. Even you uh, easy believism devils, you got it. Yeah, of course, right? But through the righteousness of faith. But what is your faith in? The law is not a faith. And there are people out there who put their faith in the law. Which Paul is warning us about in Galatians chapter 3. That it's the law. That you got to do that. No, the law is not a faith. For they which are of the law, for if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is more made void. Well, yeah. And the promise made of none effect. Why? Why? Uh, uh, what, what was that? Verse 4. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. Verse 14. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. That's why you see so many people doing the works of the law in the Old Testament, but yet not having faith on God. That's what it means, having faith and works. Okay? They believed, I do this. God's obligated to, yes. No. You have faith on God. If you didn't do those works to shed blood, because remember, the blood sacrifices under the law the blood of God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, had yet to be shed, okay? The blood of bulls and goats only, uh, only covered it. Whereas the blood of God washeth away, cleanseth away, okay? One covered, the blood of God cleanseth, okay? So they had to shed blood. Without the uh, shedding of blood, there is no remission. But see, they had to do it continually. See. And what do Catholics tell you? That you have to continually eat Christ. They are continually sacrificing Christ. Their Christ, which is a little way for cooking. Okay? I mean, come on. This is, this is very simple. Very plain to get. Okay? Verse 15. Because the law worketh wrath. You didn't keep the law. You didn't do what God prescribed in the law to make a 
to cover your sin with the blood of bulls and goats, uh, God's wrath would be upon you. Okay? For where no law is, there is no transgression. They, call, they say ignorance is bliss, something like that. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace, God's unmerited favor upon you, giving you what you could never do yourself. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many, many nations, before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, make alive the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Now, go to Deuteronomy chapter 9. Deuteronomy chapter 9. Deuteronomy chapter 9. Deuteronomy chapter 9, verses 1 on to verse 6. Hear, O Israel, thou art to pass over Jordan this day, to go in to possess nations greater and mightier than thyself, cities great and fenced up to heaven, a people great and tall, the children of the Anakims, whom thou knowest, and of whom thou hast heard say, who can stand before the children of Ankh. Understand therefore this day, that the Lord thy God is he which goeth over before thee. As a consuming fire, he shall destroy them. And he shall bring them down before thy face. So shalt thou drive them out and destroy them quickly. As the Lord has said unto thee, Speak not thou in thine heart. After that the Lord thy God hath cast them out from before thee saying, For my righteousness the Lord hath brought me in to possess this land. But for the wickedness of these nations, the Lord doth drive them out from before thee. Oh, good, um, good admonition to be humble. Not for thy righteousness or for the uprightness of thine heart dost thou go to possess their land, but for the wickedness of these nations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee, and that he may perform the word which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Hebrews, the line of the Hebrews. Understand, therefore, that the Lord thy God giveth thee not this land, good land to possess it for thy righteousness, why? For thou art a stiff-necked people. Stiff-necked people. And also, while we're here, go to Leviticus chapter 18. Leviticus chapter 18. Law is not a faith. They have faith. I've already said it to you a million times. Okay? Leviticus chapter 18, verses 24 under verse 30. Now, okay, the context is about um, sexual immorality, that kind of sexual sin, okay? But <laughs> this teaching right here, this what our Lord says, Neither shalt thou lie, uh, verse 24, Defile not ye yourselves in any of these things, for in all these the nations are defiled which I cast out before you. And the land is defiled. Therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it. And the land itself vomiteth out her inhabitants. You see that fulfilled when Nebuchadnezzar came and took uh, Israel captive. We are going to see that fulfilled when America falls. Okay. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation, nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. See, if you are a stranger in Israel, 
you're expected to at least keep the semblance of the law, not to do uh, as in depth. But you know, if you're in a vis you're a visitor in another nation. You're supposed to keep their laws, okay? Not do willy nilly according to your own dictate, okay? For all these abominations have the men of the land done which were before you, and the land is defiled, that the land spew you not you out also when ye defile it, as it spewed out the nations that were before you. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore, Shall ye keep mine ordinance, that ye commit not any one of these abominable customs, which were committed before you, and that ye defile not yourselves therein. I am the Lord your God. And also now, let's go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 12. Deuteronomy chapter 12. Deuteronomy chapter 12. Verses 29 on to verse 32. When the Lord thy God shall, when the Lord thy God shall cut off these nations from before thee, whither thou goest to possess them, and thou succeedest them, and dwellest in their land, take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them. Learn not the way of the heathen. After that they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. Uh, 2 Kings chapter 17 talks about this quite well. We're not going to look at it. Don't worry. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God, for every abomination to the Lord which he hateth have they done unto their gods. <laughs> yeah. For even their sons and their daughters, they have burnt in the fire to their gods. <laughs> what thing soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. And of course, Deuteronomy chapter 27, one verse, one verse. Deuteronomy chapter 27, one verse, verse 26. Uh, let's read verses 10 and 12 again to refresh our memories. For as many as are under the works of the law are under the curse of the law, are under the curse, excuse me. For it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Verse 26 in Deuteronomy 12. Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them, and all the people shall say Amen. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Verse 13. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. And we already looked at that, okay? For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. Romans... Oh, you idiot devils. You'll never get it. You'll never, you'll never, you'll never get it. Unless the Lord save you, you'll never get it. You'll never get it. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou be wise in his, unless he be wise in his own conceits. I just bradized that. Excuse me, but Romans chapter eight, verses one on to verse four. There is <laughs> you devils. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. You're saved by your own belief. You're walking after the flesh. You believe you're a good person, even though God says you're not. 
that you were worth dying for. You're walking after the flesh. You, you gave up X, Y, Z. Then God will see you fit to give you repentance. You're walking after the flesh. Okay? There is therefore no, now no condemnation, condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what, <laughs> for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemns sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Sorry about that. All right. Now, Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13, verses 38 and 39. Acts chapter 13, verses 38 and 39. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, and by him all that believe are justified from all things from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Okay? The law could make nobody perfect. Perfect in heart. Okay? And as we have seen yet again, where is, flat, where is sin condemned? In the flesh. See, don't... See, you devils don't get this. God dwelling within flesh. A typology. God living within us. Okay? Okay? I know you devils don't get that. Because you lost. And you worship Satan. And Satan's all about flesh. I get that. But... <laughs> Oh, boy. <laughs> Guys are going to have a time in the time of Jacob's trouble, I'll tell you what. Verse 14. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. For, uh, Romans chapter 3 now. 29 on to verse 30. See how we did that? Romans 3, verses 29 and 30. Romans 3, verses 29 and 30. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not of the Gentiles also? Of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith... Because it is to the Jew first, they need to believe on their Mashiach, their God, their Savior, their King. And uncircumcision, us who are not Jews, through faith. Okay? That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. I will be in them and dwell in them and they shall be my God and I shall be their God and they shall be my people. Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15 verses 8 on to verse 13. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. And that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written. For this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles, and sing unto thy name. And again he saith, Rejoice ye Gentiles with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and laud him, all ye people. And again, Isaiah saith, Isaiah, There shall be a root of Jesse. And he that shall rise, and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, in him shall the Gentiles trust. 
Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing, that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Okay? And remember, the purpose of us Gentiles being grafted into the tree of the Jew. You read that in Romans 11. Okay? I'll, I'll, I'll put that in Romans 11. Okay? You read that in Romans 11. The purpose for us to be grafted into the Jews' tree is to make them jealous so that the Jews who have rejected their Messiah might see their Messiah, Jesus Christ our Lord, our Savior, our God, our Father, living in us by demonstration and by word, by word and demonstration, okay? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. Okay? Now, let's read verse 15. Now, watch the time here. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, Yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Genesis chapter 17. Genesis chapter 17. Genesis chapter 17. Come on, fingers, work with me. <laughs> Genesis chapter 17, verses 1 on to verse 8. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face and God talked with him saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. What does Abraham mean, by the way? For a father of many nations have I made thee. That's what the name Abraham means. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession. And I will be their God. Now he's talking about giving that unto the Jew, Israel. The Hebrew, the promised land for an inheritance. But its future fulfillment will be fulfilled when Jesus Christ, God our Father, comes back at his second coming, rules and reigns from Jerusalem in the kingdom of heaven. See. And also Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 13 on to verse 20. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife, wherein God willing more abundantly to shew unto the heirs of promise, heirs plural, the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things, immutable, couldn't be spoken, in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation, who have fed, who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil, 
whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Here's the thing. The promise made unto Abraham, unto Abraham, find a condition for it. Find a condition for it. Find it. He said, get out into the country. I will shew thee and I will make thee a father of many nations. He promised him that. There was no condition to that promise to him, but unto the nation of Israel. Oh, there were many conditions. See, there was no condition unto the promise by grace through faith. But for the Jew, the Hebrew, keeping the promised land as in the Old Testament, oh, there were a lot of conditions, weren't there? Oh, absolutely there were. Absolutely. Verse 16 in Galatians chapter 3. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not unto seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. The fulfillment of the promise of Abraham is Jesus Christ. Okay? Genesis chapter 13. Genesis chapter 13. Genesis chapter 13, verses 14 on to verse 18. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that Lot was separated from him, Look up now thine eyes, and look from the place, and lift up now thine eyes, and look from the place where thou art northward, and southward, and eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. Forever. Who is he talking about? The nation or Jesus Christ? I'll let you figure that one out. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed be seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Then Abram removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron and built there an altar unto the Lord. And notice what number comes before number 13, 12. Is there a condition in this promise? No. No, there isn't a condition, is there? The promise of the Messiah, that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, okay? would come to be king, to rule from Jerusalem. The fulfillment of the promise. Okay? And remember, unto the nation. Oh, it was very conditional. They, you had to do X, Y, or Z, or as we have seen through the testimony of Scripture, God kicks them out. And go to Genesis chapter 26 now. Genesis chapter 26 Verses 1 on to verse 5. Now, Isaac was the promised son to Abraham. Okay? We already talked about this before. And as a type, okay, as a type, Isaac being the inheritor of everything that was of Abraham. Okay? Genesis 26, verses 1 on to verse 5. And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I will tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries. And I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thy seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. 
because that Abraham obeyed my voice, obeyed his voice, did what he said, he had faith in what he will do, okay? And kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. But this is before the law. Isn't it? Yeah. 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 You see? Now, let's read verse uh, 17 now. Verse 17 in Galatians chapter 3. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. Again, the promise fulfilled in Christ Jesus. Okay? The promise fulfilled in Christ Jesus. Genesis chapter 15. You see that? Genesis chapter 15. You see how we did that? Yeah? Genesis chapter 15, verses 12 on to verse 21. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. And lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. Oh yeah, he sure did. And afterward shall they come out with great substance. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. And it, shall, and it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. In the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, Unto thy seed... Have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates, the Kenites and the Kenizzites and the Kadmonites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Rephaims and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Girgashites and the Jebusites. And remember, the little promised land was promised unto Israel. They went over and got it. But remember, them remaining there was conditional. The unconditional promise is fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Okay, do you get it? Okay, you with me? Okay. Now, Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12. You know, brethren, if you are not in the Old Testament at all, you are crippling. I've said this to you before. If you're not in the Old Testament at all, you are crippling yourself and your walk with the Lord. You truly are. Okay, Exodus chapter 12, verses 21 on to verse 23. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. Side, side, top. A symbol, if you will, of the cross. Okay? This does not... They were not looking forward to the cross in the Old Testament. Okay? Again, read Ephesians chapter 3. That explains it. <coughs> but the type of cross, of the cross, the way of the cross, right here. Okay? A type giving the a picture of the blood up top and the blood on the sides. Okay? Verse 23. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel, not the flesh. Again, it is the blood. Okay? And on the two side posts... The Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come into your houses to smite you. And, and skip 
to verses 40 on to verse 42 in Exodus chapter 12. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. Fulfillment of prophecy. But the Lord said unto Abraham, unto Abram, excuse me. And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even the selfsame day, it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. It is a night to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them out from the land of Egypt. This is the night, this is that night of the Lord to be observed for all the children of Israel in their generations. Now today, observing the Passover is not a requirement for salvation. But if you're a Jew, an actual Hebrew, I believe you should as remembering. Okay? And we, the church of the living God, we were brought out of the world. We were saved. We are saved from this. Okay? Again, the type, the typology in the story of the Passover is so rich, so beautiful for our instruction and in righteousness today. Okay? And it's, it's a pity, it's a shame that not too many of the church and the living God indulge in such. It really is. It really is. Now, let's read verse 18. And we're going to have to stop this soon and get into part two. But I wanted to get, in, uh, get as much as possible in this uh, part one before we get to part two. Okay? But verse 18. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. And we've already, we've already looked at that. But... Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9, verses 30 on to verse 33. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith? But Israel, who followed after the law of righteousness hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Wait, 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 wait hold on. <laughs> Sorry. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore? Because they sought it not by faith. It says right there in verse 12, the law is not of faith. Yes, you're right. Scripture is right. But they sought it not by faith. Mechanically doing the law without faith on God, who rewardeth them who seeketh him diligently, who had faith where you would have faith in the Old Testament that got on what God will do. You keep the law, you have faith that God will honor you because you did what he said. But see, wherefore, because they sought it not by faith. Their faith was in the doing of the law. Not, it's like these people who praise the Lord for his blessings, but don't give thanks unto the blessor. That's what it is. They, they, they concentrate on the blessing rather than the blessor. See, that's the problem. They were looking at the law as the be all end all without looking to the one who gave them the law. If Abraham, uh, if uh, Abraham, your father, you were, you would believe me. When our Lord says that, if Abraham were your father, you would believe me. But they were of Abraham, um, uh, as far as the flesh. They came from the line of Abraham the Hebrew, but they didn't have the faith of Abraham, who put everything on God, and that was accounted to him for righteousness. And remember. The law needed to be kept because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. It's not this heresy. They were just objects of faith. No. No. Because Leviticus chapter, what is it? 11.17 uh, or 17.11, one of the two. Um, it is the blood that maketh atonement for the soul. And the blood of bulls and goats covered the blood of God. Gets you squeaky clean. See, 
okay? Squeaky clean. Very, very, very easy to get this, okay? Verse 32 again. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at that stumbling stone. You know where our Lord says to the Pharisees, search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they that speak of me? There are people out there who can search the word mechanically, line upon line, precept upon precept, that they may fall backwards. But those who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, who are drawn from the breast and fed of the milk, it's line upon line, precept upon precept. See? See? There is an actual and there is a mechanical. There is a phony and there is an authentic. And when you are seeking to justify yourself by something you do, that's the phony. That's not for today. That's not what God, you needed, I mean, like I said, in the Old Testament, your faith was on God on what he would do. That he would honor you because you honored the law. Okay? But how many out there just kept the law and thinking they did that, not putting, having faith on him, they would be saved. And how many of you do that today? I'm saved by my faith only. Therefore, God is obligated to save me. You're having faith in your faith. Just like the metaphysical mind science guys, like Mary Baker Eddy and all these, uh, you know, uh, charismatic guys. That's exactly what you're doing. Verse 33. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And while we are here, Romans chapter 11. Couldn't get away from this. Verses 5 and 6. Romans chapter 11, verses 5 and 6. Even so then, at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is, then it, it, then is it no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. This does not talk about, this is not, again, the Calvinistic, you're going to hell whether you want to or not, you're going to heaven whether you want to or not. No, no. The election according to grace. The election according to grace to grace a remnant according to the election of grace there are very few of the Hebrew who are truly of the church of the living God truly amongst the many of Israel amongst the many of Israel there are very few that are actually saved born again converted new creatures in Christ Jesus, okay? And the election of grace, the election, God chose the way of the cross, that remnant, that small group that are of the church of the living God, like it says, a remnant according to the election of grace, a small portion out of the Hebrews, the Jews today, the election of grace, the election of grace, the way of the cross, see, okay? Okay, and now Psalm 105, Psalm 105, whoa, 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 where are you going, smunky britches, <laughs> Psalm 105, verses 6 on to verse 12, O ye seed of Abraham his servant, ye children of Jacob his chosen, he is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He hath remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac, and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. Look at that progression. Made the promise to Abraham, the promised son, Isaac. From Isaac came Jacob. From Jacob became Israel. 
See? Okay? Saying, Unto thee will I give the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance. When they were but few men in number, yea, very few, and strangers within it. Hmm. Hmm. Very interesting, huh? Now, we're going to, we stopped it at verse 18. We're going to stop this video right now. I'm going to take a, a chill for a little minute. Then going to get into part two, where we pick up at verse 19 on to the close of the chapter here in Galatians chapter two. Okay, so hit uh, sit tight and uh, keep an eye out for uh, part two of this video. Okay, thank you very much. See you in the next video.